If you love Baltimore sports, you'll love WNST.net. Well, we've seen other people, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers, they've been there 35, 40 years. O'Malley family now says, enough. I want out of baseball. I'm losing money. I don't see a way I can, can make money. How can Peter Angelos make money on the Baltimore Orioles? Is the only way to say Brady, no, Messina, no, Ripken, no, and to bring down that salary structure? And, of course, now we have a salary, uh, a salary tax. And you have uh, what they call a luxury tax. Once you uh, go beyond $51 million in payroll, which includes what you pay in salaries to the players as well as the fringe benefits, which run about $6 million a year, as soon as you go over that $51 million mark, which we are over, you have to pay $0.35 cents on each dollar over that as a penalty to the league. And the purpose of that is to try to put some restraint on player salaries. Unfortunately, it isn't working. All it has done at this time, anyway, is to increase the cost of operations. Well, your good friend Jerry Reinsdorf, of course, had a, a major endeavor in that. Well, hopefully, Jerry, I understand, uh, may be leaving baseball. I understand he may. Oh, can we get a round of applause on that, huh? Yeah. 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 Well, let me tell you. You buy in the White Sox, too? No, you, no I'm just checking. you can only buy one team, thank, okay, you. thank God. Well, buy the White Sox, give them to me. And you and I can compete. Well, that's a good idea. All right. So anyway, let's get back to this uh, the situation right. with uh, with Ryan's door driving up salaries and with you being in the market to try to make money with this squad. Obviously, it's going to cost you more to have a team this year than it cost you last year. Well, let's talk about Ryan's door for a minute. Who who tries? He's got the Bulls. He's got a tremendous basketball team. And while he hasn't done well with baseball, you certainly have to give him credit for putting together probably the greatest basketball team Ever. in the history of the game. Ever. So, uh, turning to baseball, Jerry's problem is that in 1996, they drew 1,600,000 fans, and he has a payroll of 40-some million dollars. So you can see that he really took it on the chin financially. Fortunately, while we had lost $4 million last year, we'll make that up this coming year, I believe. But the losses that one can incur where you have a $40 million-plus payroll and you only bring in a million six hundred thousand people are enormous so what i think he decided to do was to get albert bell along with frank thomas got a terrible break with robin ventura the other day which is going to affect what that team does unfortunately but he decided to make a huge commitment financially to try to get his attendance up we the orioles are the envy of the american league and the national league because of the support that we get from Oriole fans, and, and that's pretty comfortable to have because without it, we couldn't do what we're doing. But Reinsdorf doesn't have that, so he's made a strong commitment in 1997, and I hope it works out for him. I hope he gets an attendance around two and a half to three million. Certainly, with that lineup, he should. And so, putting aside the differences I've had with him, I'm rooting for him because when he gets that kind of an attendance, that's good for baseball and that enables him to continue giving the Chicago fans first-class baseball. For a week was the loss of John Miller. Now, I've heard both sides of this. I want to hear your side publicly on the situation. From all indications, John Miller wanted to be a Baltimore Oriole. It was never offered a contract. Is that true or is that untrue? I don't think that's correct. Uh, actually, uh, what happened there was that Miller uh, had been talking to a number of clubs on the West Coast long before his co his contract had expired with the Orioles. The reason for that is his wife is from San Francisco, and she apparently wanted to return to San Francisco where her family lives, and uh, that was the purpose of John inquiring uh, to San Diego, uh, the Padres, as well as the Giants to see if they would be interested in him as an announcer. Well, doesn't it help you, uh, public relations-wise, to offer the guy a contract if you wanted to keep him? Did you want to keep John Miller? Well, it all depended on what the terms were. Would I have given him a five-year contract at $500,000 a year, uh, particularly in light of the fact that he was every weekend he left town and went on ESPN? The answer is no. I would not give him a five-year contract at 500000 a year. Uh, in light of the fact that he was absent, say, 30% of the time. I was willing to re-sign him for a year or two years, but I was not happy with the arrangements that were there when we took over the ball club. 
Uh, I thought he did a good job. I thought he was very entertaining and so on, and a, and a good baseball announcer. I had nothing personal against him. I was a little bit unhappy with him with his broadcast of the fifth playoff game. And that's what I meant when I said he should learn to bleed a little orange and black. What he did during that broadcast, we were losing 6-1. to one. That was the game when Robbie let the ball go th- uh, through his legs. I remember it well. I was in Indianapolis yeah. at the Colts-Ravens game. Go ahead. And then uh, we uh, eventually caught up to some degree. It was 6-4, to four, the final score. Uh, and actually, if Robbie hadn't made that error, which for him is just an unbelievable happening, but he was under a lot of pressure, uh, we probably would have won that game. But putting that aside, during that game, after we were behind 6-1... to one, If you I love Baltimore sports, general, you'll love uh, WNST.net. ...of the broadcast was such that he wasn't feeling any pain, he wasn't feeling any sorrow... And in losing that game, we were going to be out of the playoffs. In fact, he spent most of his time pra- praising the Yankee players. Well, I understand that, you know, you should praise the players on both sides, but I believe that an announcer for a team should have a little bit of, what would you say, hurt, a little pain, bleed a little bit when a team is getting knocked out of the playoffs or maybe losing a World Series. Now, that doesn't mean you're a homer, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean. It merely means that if you're getting paid $485,000 a year, as far as I'm concerned, you're not a journalist. You are a paid announcer for that ball club, and you should be supportive of that ball club. Now, it doesn't mean that if, if uh, Cal Ripken is out at second base, you're supposed to lie and tell the, the, the listeners that Cal Ripken was safe. If he's out, he's out. Nobody asked John or anybody else to distort what they're seeing when they announce the game. What I'm talking about is if you're a paid representative of the game, you're no longer a, an independent journalist. And all this business about homers, I don't buy that. I want him to broadcast the game, to tell it the way it really is, but I want him to believe in the team and to bleed a little bit when we're getting our brains knocked out. That's all. Real simple. So we replaced John Miller with Jim Hunter, who is a confirmed, lifelong New York Yankee fan. Well, if he's a Yankee fan, if he's that, as you said, Nestor, and that's his privilege. He can be a fan of any team he wishes to be. When he's, when he's on that microphone, he better be an Oriole fan. <laughs> or he's not going to be here too long. We'll pass that along to him. It's a... Well, listen, I think he knows it. If I mean, you love Baltimore sports, now, you'll love WNST.net. Color what he sees or distort what he sees. I think he should be absolutely accurate. He should be honest with the fans. And I really believe that all announcers are basically that way. But I believe if we're losing, and we're losing a playoff game, which means we're out of the playoffs, that you're not talking about where you're going to dinner that night or how great all the Yankee players are. You know, I'd say, at least you could say, don't worry out there, folks. We'll get them next year. Or encourage the fans that while this is a pretty sad moment in in our baseball year, that next year we're going to be back and we're going to win next year. Not to act too blasé or too cavalier about our team losing. Let's talk about the John Miller's statement that he had never met you, that you had never exchanged pleasantries that you were not a John Miller fan long before Game 5 of the ALCS. How do you, did you meet John? Did you have lunch with John? Had, had you ever done any of these things during the four years of ownership of the team? I've never had lunch with John. For that matter, I've never had lunch with any baseball player that plays for the Orioles except Cal Ripken. I make it my business not to intrude on the player's time. I make it my business not just because I'm the the boss, so to speak, or the managing partner. I don't intrude on the players' personal lives. They know if they need something, if there's a problem, they can come to me. In fact, they have. Some of them have. And the same holds true of John, as well as uh, uh, the other announcers with whom I'm friendly. I am friendly with the people who are part of the organization, but there's one thing I don't do. For example, call up a baseball player and have him come. For example, tonight, bring up. I couldn't bring him tonight because they're in spring training, but if they were here locally, I would not 
uh, impose on their time to ask them to come with me in order for uh, me, in a sense, to display them because of their popularity. So the same thing holds true of John. I know him. I met him. We, we had brief little chats. We never really sat down and talked baseball. I never felt it was necessary. I did an acceptable job. And outside of the reference I made a moment ago, I thought he was a good announcer. I think he left Baltimore because he had a five-year deal in San Francisco for $2.5 million. And I understand there were some other fringe benefits far and above what he was getting here in Baltimore. But I think the most decisive factor was his wife wanted to go back where her family is. I respect that. I think he did what his wife wanted him to do. And I think that's what a responsible husband should do. What about an announcer you say you don't want them to paint anything outs is being safe and, and, and balls is being strikes and, and a, a, the pitcher losing 10 miles an hour off his fastball or any of those kind of things. What about criticisms of you? What about criticisms of Pat Gillick or the way the franchise is run or trades that are made or trades that are not made or decisions that Davey Johnson makes uh, as far as a hit and run, a bunt play, a steal uh, uh, or, or those kinds of situations. You criticisms mean? of you, your franchise, your management team, your decisions. Does, does an announcer have a say in that when he's on your payroll at uh, four hundred eighty-five thousand dollars a year? I, that's never come up. But if you're asking me whether or not a person who works for the ball club should be on the microphone criticizing ownership, criticizing management, knocking the players, the answer is no. That's not his prerogative. That's the prerogative of the of the press. Me. You, exactly. Thank you. You're not on the Oriole payroll. You can say anything you please. You can express your opinions. You can criticize me and so on because truly you're an independent of the Orioles and you're performing a journalistic function. But once you're on that Oriole payroll, then I think you owe a certain responsibility and duty to the Orioles. I mean, when you're paid by an organization, you've got to be part of the organization. This is nothing more than propaganda being generated by some of these writers who say that a baseball announcer earning a half a million dollars a year should have the right to knock the team or have the right to criticize the owner or the right to criticize the fans. But don't you believe the fans see the non-objectivity? I mean, me, I'm a bleeding heart Oriole fan, 23 to 22 in the Highland Town, going over to the ballpark, GNA Coney Island up on Eastern Avenue. But I see when mistakes are made, and I think every bar stool in this city at some point has had somebody's fanny sitting on it saying, I can't believe the Orioles did that. I can't believe Ripken did that. I can't believe they didn't sign him. I, I, so so yeah. for, to, to use the, the rose-colored glasses, doesn't it really sort of taint what the announcer's about? That if he can't be objective in the way of criticism, how can he be objective? in the way of praise. I wait a while. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I got two applause. You're going to get a bigger one. You got some support out I'll there. I'll tell you what. Well, you come to my turf. I give you a lot of... No, right. that's good. That's Dave, good. you're a good man. You came out here on my turf. That's, that's great. That's okay. Let me tell you. Number one, every fan has a right to criticize a team, condemn ownership, say that Davey Johnson should be uh, fired or given a million-dollar pay raise and so forth and so on. What I'm saying is if you're part of the Oriole organization and you're broadcasting Oriole games, it is not your prerogative to knock the Oriole team. Everyone in this room works for some organization. They are not expected to go around knocking the organization that they're working for. That's a fundamental proposition. You don't hear these baseball writers who write for the Sun Papers knocking the Sun Papers, do you? Privately. Well, they knock everybody else. <laughs> if you <laughs> love Baltimore sports, <laughs> you'll <Lauderdale>. love WNST.net. <laughs> they let it in the paper. Hey, you know, did you, ever see, uh, did you ever see a baseball writer or any political writer for the Sun Papers of the New York Times write in one of their stories that they think that the Sun Papers is too conservative? Conservative or too liberal, or that their position on a given issue is incorrect, they're not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to do that because they work for the Sun Papers. Now, that's okay. They're supposed to review what's happening out there in the community, and they give their opinions, and we as readers of the paper are entitled to consider what they say, either accept it or reject it. But there's a difference when you work for an organization. That doesn't mean that when you work for an organization, you should lie for the organization. It means that if you're broadcasting a game, you should tell it the way it really is. But keep your opinions to yourself. You're not hired to give opinions. You're hired to give a play-by-play -play recitation 
for the, the people who are listening to the broadcast.